One in Louisville could soon mean police officers won't be the only ones responding to the call. A new initiative is recommending sending other professionals to emergency calls like mental health cases. Well, researchers from U of L and Spalding University are studying ways to create a new form of emergency response that's better for overall public safety. They're talking to people who live in Louisville to learn from their experiences. And let's say I'm I'm in a really bad space and I am at my wits end and what pulls up in front of my house are, you know, blue lights and a police officer, there's a very good chance that whatever space I'm in, I may escalate because now I'm, you know, now someone sees me as a, a criminal or some, now there's a risk of something else happening to me. A report will be presented this summer to Metro government. The city's budget proposal for the upcoming fiscal year has set aside $2.9 million to help fund the pilot program that could start as early as next year. In the meantime, though, we can look to other communities across the country to get an idea of how this might work. Rob's here to tell us about some of the other programs and studies that already exist. Hey, Rob. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, so the attention to this topic has become very intense over the past year, that's for sure. But it's actually not a brand new idea, and that's because this is not a brand new problem. There are more than 240 million 911 calls every year in the U.S., according to the Vera Institute. But the vast majority are not related to a crime in progress. Yet, police are the de facto responders. That can sometimes put both our officers and the people they're responding to into more dangerous circumstances than they might be otherwise. This can especially be true with calls involving possible overdose and mental health issues. For example, there is a person at a park bench, um, maybe early morning with his head down, and a concerned person driving by calls 911 to say there's someone who might be in crisis, might be homeless, might be overdosed. An officer does not have those tools. There's, there's nothing to arrest. In a case like this, researchers believe a social worker or a medic would be better equipped to keep both that person and the broader community safe. And researchers in several other places have had similar intuitions, which is why similar programs have been launched in places like Camden, New Jersey, Tucson, Arizona, and Eugene, Oregon. The program in Eugene is called CAHOOTS. It stands for Crisis Assistance Helping Out on the Streets. It's been around for 31 years now, actually. Eugene has the largest per capita of people experiencing homelessness in the country. So they now have two person teams of a medic and a crisis worker who are unarmed and they are the ones who respond to mental health and overdose calls. The program reports to save the city millions of dollars each year by reducing police responses to these kinds of calls. Now police backup is still an option if one of these calls escalates. But in 2019, CAHOOTS teams responded to about 24,000 calls and they only called for police backup 150 times. So that's less than 1%.